Yes, it is summertime, and you know what? It's brush pile season, baby. Uh, the brush piles are a lot of fun to fish. If you just if you follow the Bassmaster Elite series, uh, not too long ago we were down there at Lake Eufaula in June. June and July are you know the best brush pile months in in most lakes. Uh, you know lakes that are uh, have a lot of aquatic vegetation, a lot of northern natural lakes. Uh, a lot of southern Florida Florida lakes, not as much of a factor. But yes, I have caught some big fish out of brush piles in places like Florida and uh, places that have a lot of grass. So it's, it's not exclusively, uh, you know, just leave those alone. But a lot of lakes like you follow right now and, and a lot of other lakes in, you know, I live here in Virginia, this part of the country, brush piles are a big factor. Last week I was down in North Carolina, caught a good fish out of a brush pile. So uh, we're going to give you the best brush pile baits you want to go fish a brush pile i want to give you my top baits for fishing brush piles the best brush pile baits coming up and where do you start that's a big question is which one of these do you start with i'm going to go through a few of these i'm going to give you my top two and i'm going to have to start with uh little john dd70 and depending on the depth of the brush pile i also have usually have a uh, little john baby dd60 this one's going to run about 12 to 14 feet and this one's going to run about 16 to 18 feet so depending on how deep that brush pile is and where you need to hit it that um that one of those two crankbaits is going to be in the right depth range more than likely and and i just i don't um <laughs> I, I am going to sound biased here because I'm completely biased. I, I will, I, you know, obviously I designed the, the Spro Little John DDs, but I know a number of top pros out there on tour that this is what they throw in a brush pile. They may not throw it, you know, on ledges or in other areas, but they do throw it in brush piles because of the way that that thing comes through brush piles. So uh, that's, that's one. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit more in a few minutes. Number two is going to be ribbon tail worm. Uh, you know, any kind of ribbon tail worm is good as long as it's plum colored. This is a this is a missile baits tomahawk. Old monster is is good. I, I pro generally stay with like a three eighths ounce sinker. For some reason, in the summertime, red plum definitely uh, a, my top choice. You, you know, green pumpkin is also good. Green pumpkin flash I've had real good success with in the summertime. Uh, those are probably my top three colors in uh, in a big ribbon tail worm. That's two. Those are my, definitely my top two. But re in recent couple years, I've started mixing in a couple other baits and had really good success. And the one I want to kind of talk about is the the swim bait. Yeah, these are this Scottsboro big Scottsboro swim bait. This is a uh, a little Kai Tech. Um, and this is a, a little bit bigger kind of tech. This is, uh, but it's got that, the head has got to have the line tie right at the beginning and, and some sort of weed guard. And man, you can, you can climb that swim bait right through a brush pile. I've had some pretty good success with that. It's something else to kind of throw into the mix. I feel like that's a, that's a good one. In my opinion, one of the best absolute fish catchers for catching fish out of a brush pile is the old drop shot and, and it's not just any drop shot i use about an eighth ounce sinker on on this deal that's a muscle baits quiver it is not a little teeny tiny robo worm the the little teeny tiny robo worms be honest you you catch a lot of stinking brim and small bass yes you can catch some big ones on the on the robo worm but man that the muscle baits quiver it's got some meat to it it's got a little bit bigger uh size and for no more than this thing's been out, I have absolutely trashed them on that worm. And that is uh, gonna be, you know, the drop shot is the deal, but that worm is really good. That's a, a, a new color, it's called Hillbilly Magic. I just caught one just the other day on it. But, uh, you know, any type of green pumpkin, red, red bug candy, one of those, one of those types of colors, you just kind of mix, mix it up a little bit, give them some different looks. And then last, but not least, a big full-size jig man a big full-size jig can give the fish a little different presentation you know because you got us you got a little swim bait wiggling through there you got something finessey going through there 
you got a big long straight profile with that worm going through there you got a real hard wiggle going for that reaction bite coming through there this big the big full-size jig is is a great great brim imitator and this is a um headbanger missile jigs headbanger half ounce uh full green pumpkin get the green pumpkin twin turbo on the back uh full green pumpkin colored jig that is the probably had the most success with is just straight green pumpkin on that on that jig not all jigs come through brush very well some jigs come through rock pretty good some jigs skip real good uh, but man uh, you know a skipping jig or the the jig you would normally skip docks with usually not the best jig for for throwing into brush piles in my experience man they i've, I've hung up in a lot of brush piles i've done it been there done that but that that headbanger comes through the brush really really well it doesn't have a massive gaff of a hook on there uh, it's got a a five aught it's a bit but it's a smaller diameter it's not a huge diameter you can fish this with 15 16 18 pound uh, test make a real long cast and you can still get a good hook set in the in the fish when they bite it so that's kind of the the deal why you don't want you know a wire on your jig hook as big as my pinky finger you, you just don't you don't need that the way that you're fishing it and with that kind of heavy wire diameter you have a harder time getting the hook set a little bit lighter wire is is the deal i, I thought it was kind of funny uh, buddy gross won that lake you fall bassmaster elite that i was referencing and he, one of his key baits was a a jig and it was a jig with kind of a uh, a tapered head it's a newer design from Nichols coming out but it had a, a slightly uh, lighter wire hook and i thought that was interesting I saw a close-up picture of that that jig, and yeah, the hook wire is probably similar diameter to what the uh, to what that headbanger is. But so that's that's a good good one to mix in there. And all right, yeah, I'm gonna just give you a little quick tutorial on approaching these brush piles. Don't get here's the biggest mistake: do not get locked in with one bait. That is a to me that is a cardinal sin. I have made it myself in the past made that mistake go out there and you you catch one on a on let's say on a ribbon tail worm catch one on on the tomahawk then you're then you're just throwing the tomahawk in each each brush pile after that make two or three casts go to the next one go, two or three casts go to the next one man you're, you're gonna miss you're gonna miss a lot of fish because you're not you're only gonna catch those really active fish that are just looking for that one particular profile uh, i can't tell you the number of times i've gone to a brush pile thrown in there a couple times with the ribbon tail worm, then maybe uh, picked up the swim bait, made a cast or two, and then pick up the crank bait and catch two in a row. And then I've had other ones where I pick up, you know, go to it with the crank bait, start, hit it two or three times with the crank bait, nothing, throw out there with the worm, on the first cast, catch one, second cast, catch one. And I don't know what the theory is behind that. I don't know if it's a situation where you're, um, the, the crankbait is is triggering those fish to, to bite, but they don't bite the crankbait. Or, or if those fish could be outside, you know, 10, 15 feet away from the brush pile, you take that crankbait and bang it into that brush pile a couple of times, and all of a sudden those fish are at the brush pile, you throw the worm in there, boom, done deal. That, that could happen. Um, I don't know what the, the deal is with that but a lot of times the crankbait can be a trigger whether they bite the crankbait or they bite the bait you throw in there afterwards <coughs> i've seen the um i've seen it where a swim bait is kind of the same trigger um but then i think there's times when the crankbait spooks them uh, so if you throw the crankbait in there too early you're going to spook those fish if they might be up against that brush pile but not not ready to bite and you throw that crankbait in there it might spook them off I don't know, I, you know, so just keep mixing up the rotation of baits. And I mean, these five definitely stay on my deck when I'm fishing brush piles and I'm going to rotate through them when I'm, you know, hitting each, each brush piles in, in during brush pile season as it is in the summertime. So there's, uh, there's my best brush pile baits. If you want to see what other baits I like to throw in different situations, be sure to hit that down there in the comments. If you enjoyed this, hit the subscribe button. 
and I'll be bringing you a lot more information about bass fishing, lures, bass fishing techniques, and all that kind of fun stuff. So uh, be sure to uh, hit me up with any questions if you got those down there as well. Thanks for watching.